Thank you. Uh, someone said today that it's very hard to speak 20 minutes and very easy to speak two hours. I think it's even harder to speak whatever you want. And that was very hard to me to think what to do. And I'm sorry I will speak in, Spanish, in, in English, although I could do it in Spanish, not in Catalan yet. Okay. So I, I thought I was talking about the future of search. And I guess the difference between other fields is that the future of internet is next year. We don't know what will happen in five more years. The internet changes too fast. I mean, remember that we only have 19 years after the invention of the web, only 14 after it was popular, only 13 after the first search engine, and maybe a few more years after the first social website. So, So I just want to mention some trends, and then, and then I just want to mention a lot of images, examples of things we have done very recently. So you will see things that no, no one has seen outside Yahoo, and so you have to forget them after you see it, okay? So the search engines are not really to search anymore. So most people don't use a search engine to search. They, used to, they use it to mediate with the web. They use it to say, download the software, buy a book, reserve a ticket. So you are trying to achieve things using a search engine, and really the web couldn't exist without a search engine. It's the only way to access that much information. Today the web is infinite, so it's really I'm talking about many, many data. So as I said there, it's like a computational device for rational and behavioral interactions. What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? So one trend, and I will see your examples, I will show you examples about the trend, is how we're trying to guess what you are trying to do. Not you as a person, but you as a group. All the people trying to download, say, the last version of Firefox. All the people trying to find something. And we have to make use of this wonderful thing called social media, which is called Web 2.0 for, I guess, marketing reasons. So these are some examples. I will show you examples for all search engines, so I'm not biased. So this is a famous uh, query, uh, famous ambiguous queries. If you just say Papa, you will get the same result. So nothing about the Vatican, nor potato in Latin America, or daddy. So it's about the pizza company in New York. But if you see here, We know it's a company, so you get right away the NASDAQ, so you can see the stock options if you have any. If you do local search, so in California, same query, Papa John's, but also you get places, because we know you're where you are, or we can guess where you are, IP address, and so on. Or this one from Google. You are expert traveler, and then you know all airport codes, and you want to travel from San Francisco to Boston in April 25. Well, we, you can realize that this is a travel, and then you get immediately the first answer is a structure box. When you want to travel from one city to another. So you are going right away to say a, to know a price and so on or trying to help you. So this is the search assistance of Yahoo. So you put the game plan, and then we can find related queries about that. Some of them even without having the words that you type. And you get also very good answers, what are called rich answers. So here, this is a movie, and you get this with a lot of inf additional information. You don't find this in Google, so you have to use it in Yahoo. A structural aggregation, same. This is another example from Microsoft. So you want to buy iPod Nano. Apple is not paying any advertising for this. And you get even prices and other statistics about that. So this trend is about content, creation of content, 
And I will not read all these numbers. This is a recent paper of two of my colleagues, Raghur Ramakrishna and Andrew Tompkins, about how things are growing in the web. And just want to mention two numbers. This one, this is what people type inside companies. So three terabytes, 3,000 gigabytes, not too much. What people is doing in social web, the web 2.0, 10 gigabytes per day, not that much, fits in memory stick today. And this is the upper bound. If all of us will start typing every day, all the time. So we're not far away from this upper bound. So it's maybe only 200 more times. So that means that we are using like uh, one half of our time generating content for someone. So this means several changes. For example, content is being fragmented every time more and more. So no one will own all the content. No one will own all the views. So there are three, four big sites that handle most of the views in the web, Yahoo, Google, and Microsoft in that order. And why is that happening? Well, one reason is because the people is the content. So you are generating content. For example, in Korea, almost most people watch only content generated by other people. And we may think that this next web is the web of our experience. So it's the web of our taste, the web of our accidents, the web of our successes, and so on. And also the consumption of the content is being fragmented. So for example, if you go to Delicious, people consume this by topic. If you go to blogs, people consume this by ages. This is a very interesting uh, result, four year old, that shows, for example, that 75% of the people blogging in the US is between 16 and 24 years old. So young people is generating this. Also the access is being fragmented. So how many of you are in Facebook? I guess all of us, no? Good. So in Facebook, not all people can access your profile. Not all people can see your data. Only your friends, maybe you don't know, but also people in your group. So for example, my colleague is in MIT group. He studied in MIT. And only people from MIT can access that content. So who can see things is also being fragmented. And it's a time of openness. Everything is open. For some companies, more open than others, but will be open. And I just want to mention two things that had happened in the last month. Uh, one happened yesterday, so I'm lucky. So this happened only yesterday, both. So Search Monkey is a way for people to say how they want to see their results. So for every company can tell the search engine, in this case Yahoo, how the result will appear. So it's more than user-generated content, it's telling us what's important in your site. A lot of people is using this, and you will see things like this. So these are the typical answers in a search engine today. This will be in the future, near future, when all people use this capability. And what is both? Both is build your own search engine. So now you can use a web service, and you can change all our results in the way that you want. So that will mean new visualizations, new ways to afford the results, whatever, whatever you want to do with them. So I will skip some more examples. So things like deep links, images, better abstracts, all that will be part of this new world of open search. One of our focus right now is social media. And I will tell you why. So for example, the largest number of groups in the world, largest sites in photos, like Flickr, largest sites in favorites, like Delicious, largest sites on people answering people. In the US, you can go put a question in Yahoo Answers, and in 15 minutes, you have someone answering you. I would like to meet that people, because they have a lot of free time to do that. But there's a lot of people answering other people. So it's the people answer. And we can use that content. 
So this is a page where you have content owned by an editor, like this one, but you have all this content created by other people. So you will see a mixture of things more and more. And why? Because this is the wisdom of crowds. So this is a book I would recommend you to read. It's not about the web. The web is just one example. But it says that under the right circumstances, people can do amazing things. A democracy should be an example, and it's not all the time. But I will not get to the, into that point. So this is the key issue, right? How we make that all of us are smarter than any of us? And that's the challenge. And in the web, you can do that. And basically, you can do that aggregating data. data. So ranking is an example of this. Uh, things in Flickr like this is another example. So just by using tags of people, you can get perfect groups of images. So we don't understand the images, but people do, and people then can help. So let me show you, in the second half, some innovation that we have done in the last six months. Some are public, some are not, but uh, you will see them anyway in two months, so you can see it in advance. So this is using user-generated content. So people put metadata on their sites. It's called microformat. So for example, every time you might send an email and you have a vCard, that's a type of microformat. You have microformats about location, about topics, and so on. So for example, this this uh, public demo, you can go and search for microsearch. And microsearch will enhance the answer with, for example, what the author put in their site. So this is a person well-known in semantic web, Ivan Herman, in the World Web Consortium. And he has a lot of metadata. So like a picture, related pages, location, and so on. So you will get these things. Or you search for Peter. So the most famous Peter in the web is uh, this Peter. I guess you know it from the Muppets. And you can see the locations where you find Peter. Or if you search for a conference, instead of a map, you get a timeline. So you can see dates. So this is about using things that people do. What about if we try to guess that? Well, you can, for example, start using tags. That will be the next step, using the social media. For example, this is about a more organized cloud of tags, something you can find in Flickr. This is something new, soon will be available on Flickr. And you can use this to categorize images. For example, this query is emergency landing. And here you see that we can differentiate between things like what in the landing, where is in California, and when, when traveling. And this is automatic categorization of different pictures. So this is the next generation of clusters in Flickr. Or you can see things improve the user interface. For example, for delicious users. You go here, you see related tags, you want to check about design, and automatically, we highlight, just with the mouse over, things that are related to your interest. So without even do a click. Same to search images. So this will be the next image generation search. So for example, here we can know that if you're looking for Washington, Washington is an ambiguous place. And we can tell you, you want Washington DC or Washington Seattle. And then right away, all the major images will change. Again, using what people have tagged. However, the most important thing is that do it even if the people don't help us. So that's about understanding language. So if you have that sentence, like Pablo Picasso was more born in Malaga, Spain, well, the computer sees this like that. So someone, last person said, technology is stupid. It's really stupid. So just a sequence of strange characters. Well, search engines today recognize that these things are different words, but they still they look like garbage. Well, using other language processing, they still they're very strange, but we can know that some places are location, that some dates are dates, and then some people is 
people. So that's the part of understanding the semantics. Like Pablo was born in Malaga. Malaga is a city, city is a country, and so on. So can you do that automatically? Yes. So this is an example of all things related to Picasso. And this will be a demo that will be public in not sure when, one, two months. May have a different name, may have a different look. We are not experts in user interfaces, not in marketing, just in technology. And it's basically a new way to search the Wikipedia. But you can search anything. News, is, Wikipedia is just an example. We don't use anything special from Wikipedia. So here are some, some queries. But for example, Pablo Picasso. If you search Pablo Picasso, you get the entry of, of Pablo Picasso in the Wikipedia, nothing new about that. But you can get related people. And for the people that know about Pablo Picasso, you can see Matisse, Dali, Miro, and so on. All this automatically. And you can get this nice graph about the relations. Or if you, again, do emergency landing, well, you, you have dates for every, every land. So you can see a timeline of where those things occur. And if you put the mouse over here, you will see why we think is that true. Or they have locations. So you see a map of all emergency landings in the world. But what happens if you do a query that doesn't appear in the Wikipedia? It's not Pablo Picasso. It's something new. Well, we create the Wikipedia entry for you. That's the hardest part. So this is an example for dinosaurs in Argentina. This entry doesn't exist in the Wikipedia. But we can generate a good entry based on related things and some sentences. So this is, for example, dinosaurs in Argentina, dinosaurs found in Argentina. So you have a piece about dinosaurs, a bit of Argentina. And if you keep looking, you will see all the dinosaurs that have been found in Argentina, because we can detect that. And if you want to compare this with the state of the art, this is a, the same example from PowerSet. It's a top company on, on processing language. It was just acquired by Microsoft uh, one week ago. I think this is much worse. 